60 Minutes Overtime. When the explosion happened at Fukushima, there were miles of towns and places where people lived around the plant. And 160,000 people, something like that, were evacuated. And at the moment, there are huge areas that are still ghost towns. People can come back into some of the areas because they have been decontaminated. But people are afraid to go back home. So we're about four miles from the Fukushima nuclear power plant and I'm holding here a rad counter, a disseminator that measures the amount of radiation. Producers, Rich Bonin and Aisha Siddiqui, went in way before I did. And they went through these ghost towns. Back in 2011, the explosion sent plumes of radioactive debris out into the atmosphere and the wind kind of took it down a path and it contaminated all these towns in its path. They've done a good amount of cleanup, but along the parts that were hardest hit, they're completely restricted entry. When you drive towards a plant, there's guards with masks and with wands and they tell you you have to pass through quickly. You can't stay there, you can't get out of your car, you can't be in an uncovered vehicle like a motorcycle. If you spend too much time there, the radiation is so high, you would be overexposed. If you get out of the car like we did and shoot pictures, they'll get mad at you like somebody did. There was a guard that waved us off. We didn't spend too much time there, but we did hop out to get some shots. Coco la. One minute, I promise. Thank you. They don't like that. Their job is to make sure people keep moving through in cars. We went to a specific town called Tomioka. It's lifeless. It's like time stands still in the town. There's cars parked exactly where they were, clothing racks with clothes still hanging from them, and there's weeds overgrown by cars and by houses. We actually met a, a man who was born and raised there, and he is now trying to get people to come back. He told us there used to be 16,000 people there. There's only like 740 now. And he said the thing he missed the most was that there were four schools in the area and there were always kids screaming and yelling and playing. He's like, you don't hear any of that anymore. It's dead, the swing sets are empty. There's maybe 20 kids total in all four schools. The powers that be would love it if people came back home. It's been seven years. The Japanese government has an initiative. They started, actually, right after the accident, cleaning up the towns. They've sent millions of workers out to literally wipe down rails, power hose leaves on trees, clean the tops of houses, dig up all the topsoil from, a, like, a tree, a garden bed. It's so detailed. It's like every single last crevice of the town will be cleaned up somehow. And the dirt is going in bags and they have no place for the bags. So the bags are everywhere. If you drive along, there's piles on the left, piles of bags on the right. Baseball fields, empty fields off the side of the highways, anywhere they can store them, they've made bag storage sites. I, I just couldn't believe the scope, the depth, the huge amount of work going into assuring everybody that everything's been decontaminated. A lot of people have made other lives somewhere else. So there's that and there's the great fear of coming back to an area that had been covered with radioactive particles. But people are beginning to filter in. They are coming back. This is their home, had always been their home. And they go back, but uh, I don't know if they'll ever restore that, the, the surrounding towns and have them really whole, healthy communities.